Hi, I'm Zoe Routh. I'm a leadership expert and I specialize in the people stuff of leadership. I love helping CEOs cut their people issues by 75% all while building a team they love to lead. Welcome to a solo sewed solo sewed of the podcast. I'm also recording this by video. So if you're listening to the audio and the audio sounds a little bit different, that's because I'm experimenting experimenting and plus i bought a new curling iron and i wanted to test it out on video jury's out on that it kind of looks a bit floppy <laughs> so today's um in today's episode we have a number of exciting things the big news is of course that my new book people stuff came early from the printers and i'm so excited for this book we are still honoring pre-orders and there's an amazing set of great bonuses for on on offer uh, until July 15th. Um, so if you want to get a copy, hard copy of, of people stuff, it's available now. We'll ship it straight away as soon as you order as, as well as all the fabulous bonuses. So that's the exciting news. And one of the things I talk about in this book is the crisis of trust in leadership. That's creating a backdrop that leaders are um, navigating at this time. The crisis of trust in leadership is is so prevalent. Um, there has never been a lower sense of trust in public institutions. Um, they're at an all time low. And if you think about it, we've had royal commissions into um, child sex abuse in public institutions. We've had royal banking commissions into the banks, uh, another royal commission into care, uh, into aged care. So it kind of makes you think, what are our leaders in these institutions doing to look after the most vulnerable? And all of that backdrop creates a tinge uh, of negativity towards leaders in general. There are a few rare exceptions. Jacinta Ahern is somebody that we love and adore and we'd love to borrow for leadership here in Australia. Thumbs up, Jacinta. You're doing amazing. Um, Angela Merkel, also doing an amazing job for a number of years. And uh, Mary Robinson, who chairs the elders group. So ladies, ladies are totally winning it right now in terms of exemplifying really solid, trustworthy leadership. In any case, we've got this background of distrust happening when it comes to leaders. And now we layer on top of that the pandemic and we have a lot of challenges that leaders are facing day to day in their organizations. There's a lot of tension and there can be a lot of conflict. Now, the biggest mistake that leaders make when it comes to thinking about the conflict between their team members is that they assume it's a personality problem. No, <laughs> not at all. This is a huge myth. What it comes down to when we peel back the layers and go a little bit deeper is that there's a number of other things at play beyond just a personality difference. One of the things that we realize is that it's systems, not personalities. The way that we set up our work can cause tension between people and some common systems to find the source of this tension are things like remuneration, promotions, resourcing, and recognition. If you do these badly without any thought behind them, without any structured and documented protocol, this can lead to a lots and lots of tension between individuals, which can look like a personality problem, but isn't essentially. Um, the second myth that we want to bust around this personality conflict is, is that it's, what do my notes say here? Oh yeah, it's worldview. It's about values, how people see the world, how they act in the world. That's at conflict with another person's point of view. So perspective is really central to how people show up and operate in the world. And it's those differences, not necessarily personality, that can cause conflict. And the third myth to bust is that it's not personalities, it's stage of leadership maturity. And there's been a lot of wonderful research and writing on leadership maturity from the likes of Bill Torbert, uh, originally Claire Graves, uh, Don Beck and Chris Cohen, uh, Suzanne Cook Grouter, um, and Ken Wilber, to name just a handful of great luminary thinkers around this idea of leadership maturity. And essentially what it says is that people grow and evolve in stages that our value shift, how we see ourselves, how we see the world can shift and evolve over time. And the general pattern is that we get more and more expansive in how we see ourselves in the world. And this allows us to be more flexible, interactive, 
and capable as well as effective in how we operate with the issues at hand, whether it's on an organizational scale or whether it's one-to-one -one with individuals. So how does this insight help you? If it's not personality problems, but it's systems, it's, it's worldview, and it's stage of leadership maturity, what can you do? Well, the first thing is that it helps us as leaders to stop judging, to stop saying, oh, it's just their personality. I don't like their personality. And it kind of ends that uh, roadblock that we have when we have this conflict that helps. Uh, the other thing that helps is that it allows us to dig a little bit deeper below the surface of this apparent conflict to see what we can actually do to change things. And there's two things you can do. You can look at your systems and tweak them so they actually set people up for cooperation and collaboration instead of conflict. That's a big piece of work and it's so important to do. And the other thing that we can do is that we can look at our people and ask ourselves, are they equipped from a worldview point of view, from a leadership maturity point of view to handle the challenges that they're facing? And we probably need to do some development with them to build their people skills, to build their leadership thinking skills. So that gives us some really strong tools in order to handle what looks like a personality problem. Okay, so that is a small snapshot of what is encased in my beautiful new book, People Stuff. You can go and order a copy or several copies, that would be really awesome, on my website. The link will be in the show notes where you can go ahead and get the pre-orders before 15th of July with the special bonuses. And if you're not on my newsletter list, what the? <laughs> you're totally missing out. It's where I do make announcements like the book launch, like I advertise and announce special events like my hot potato series, which is all about how to deal with prickly pandemic people stuff problems. Yes, nailed that. That was actually really hard to say. <laughs> uh, and what else? Oh yes, and general awesomeness. I publish a weekly newsletter as well as a weekly podcast. It's all on the newsletter. It's all free. The link is in the show notes. Go there, sign up. See you later. In the meantime, Live well, lead well.